Hey there, boys and girls, it's me. Um, so I figured I'd take a little bit here uh, and go through where we're at on the B26. And, uh, and kind of explain to you where I'm at in my head. You know, for me, this kind of stuff is... It's an evolution as the thing goes on. It's it's it morphs what's going on with the kit and 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 how I'm going to do it. You know, I mean, there are. I, it's not that I never, you know, start something and have a vision of where I'm going to end up. I always do, but more often than not, I never get there. I end up taking a fork in the road or two or three, and I get somewhere else. And that's fine, right? I mean, there's there's no no problem with that. And as you can see, uh, you know, this is kind of what happens to my work area when I'm um, working on a kit. Is little by little things come into the mix here, and I end up with stuff all over, which is okay. Um, and I don't know why there's a resistor here, um, but we'll move him out of the way. So. Um, and I, I have a trash can at the end of my, my workbench here that I should use more often than I do apparently, because <laughs> I've got stuff all over. Um, so anyway, so if you've been following, we're building the monogram B26 kit. Um, it is, as far as I know, it's the second boxing. It's kit 5506. I believe the original boxing was 5501. I could be wrong on that. Um, and it doesn't really matter. So, um, here we go. I've got, I'm pretty much ready to button up the fuselage. The only thing that I need to do is put the glass in it, the windows, and, um, and go for it. But that said, let's talk about <clears throat> where we're at and what I'm thinking. Um, and what I'm thinking is always a dangerous thing. <laughs> so, so here, let's look at the. Let's, let me look, show you um, the fuselage here. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Let me see if I can get this light out this way a little bit better. How's that? That's better, huh? Um, so as you can see, we talked about this is, uh, I believe this is field draft. No, it's not. It's, um, um, sorry, I'm moving the camera. It's, no, that's for my Japanese stuff. Well, it's probably in the other room where the compressor and stuff is. I want to say it's field green or something like that. Anyway, it's a green. Um, yeah, and you want a dark green. You don't want to like an olive brown or, or a brown, or you want it's, you want it to be a green. Well, I mean, you want it to be whatever you want it to be, but so I went with green. Um, and then I airbrushed flat black, and then this is um, Ace Hardware um, aluminum black again and the green again with some um, I did try some pre-shading in here but a lot of it got well in the green areas anyway but a lot of it got trashed got over over got covered up um, the black areas are because there's no detail in there and and this in here is going to be interesting because this is where I'm going to have to put the the weight in to get it to sit on its gear so here's the other side um all the same idea uh, you know i didn't get too crazy on painting anything there's it's really hard to see in here um with this canopy on i mean it's a pretty open canopy but there's not much to see so as you can see there's these bulkheads here allows me to put weight I can 
put quite a bit of weight in here. What's probably going to be an interesting thing to solve is how to put that weight in there and get it set. Um, you know, so it's not rolling around and stuff because I think it's going to need quite a bit. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm still thinking about that. I might just put this whole thing together and drill a hole and go that route. Um, and you know, I could probably drill a hole right here in this access cover and then just sheath that with a piece of plastic, like 10 thousands plastic or something, or, you know, and that, that would probably work. We'll see. We'll see where we go. Uh, Bombay and again, black area. And this is black because there's nothing here. Um, and then tail gunners area so you know as you've no doubt noticed looking at this as i'm showing it to you i'm not real concerned about neatness at this point because there's going to be sanding and all of this stuff um and it'll all get taken care of in the wash somehow you know, these windows, um, like I said, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm contemplating on having to do now and how to mask the turret. Uh, let's look at the turret. So here's the top turret. Um, it's complete. Uh, it just needs the guns got glued into position, which is fine. Um, but that means I can't move them out of the way to mask them. <laughs> so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to figure out how to, how to deal with this. Um, okay. So let's look at the wings here. So the wings, um, you know, again, I sprayed the wheel well, well areas with that aluminum, uh, I did have an issue here with the wings. I mean, they went together really well. You can see there's no seams to speak of. Um, there is in there where the the landing lights go on both wings are like that. There's that gap in there. Um, I'll figure that out. But, um, you know, I still need to do a little bit of sand, more sanding on here. But, but this looks pretty good. And, you know, the same story over here. There's still some more sanding to do. Um, as you can see, you see that warp right there? Now, I'm not sure if this is self-induced or what. But if you look at this wingtip... Um, let it focus there. You can probably tell that I had to do quite a bit of sanding here. Somehow I ended up with a misalignment on this wingtip. I have no idea how. And it was, you know, pretty severe. It was, oh, I don't know, you know, maybe like, 50 thousandths or 100 thousandths or something it was it wasn't like an eighth of an inch but it was it was it was pretty significant so i had to sand all that back and whatnot and and kind of and make it match up and and you know so it's like i dealt with it what are you going to do um and, and i know you know i was talking to my son malachi about it and I mean, we've pretty much come to the conclusion that this is dark plastic, and even though I got plenty of light in here, um, I'm getting older, and I just I couldn't see it when I was clamping it and stuff. You know, either that or I just missed it, which would be the nice thing to think, but I think the reality is, is I just I can't see that well anymore. Um, 
So anyway, yeah. Um, so, so, well, another thing. So what happened with that is, um, so what that ends up doing is throwing the alignment off on the nacelles. Which one's the right one? That's the wrong one. This is the right one. So, um, this is off just a little bit, but I can fix it up. That's no problem. These fit pretty good. Um, this is probably going to suck back here, but, but we'll see. So, so that's where we're at there. But before we move on to that, let's look at the cockpit. So as I said, the, the, um, you know, you could see, you can see pretty well into the nose. I should have sheathed that right there, but I didn't think about it. You know, this, this, this right here, the console pedestal. I should have put a piece of plastic on there. I didn't think about it. And you could run cables and all that stuff to here, but I'm just, I'm not, not that important to me. You know, like I've said before in my videos, nobody that's going to see this is ever going to go, hey, you didn't wire all the gauges. Yeah, well. Um, and this is really, this looks complicated. And, you know, you see all this stuff. Nobody's ever going to see that stuff, so I don't worry about it. But you know, you got a dimple, you got a dimple here. You got, I don't know if these are punch out marks or what. That's a punch out mark. Nobody's going to see that stuff, so don't worry about it. Um, this is basically, I painted it black, right? To me, a black. Then I came in with, um, I think I did the yellow and then I did the green and dry brushed. I dry brushed everything with gray and uh, came back and touched up the green and then I came back and did the, the access doors and the belt buckles. And again, I went out of the lines here on this belt buckle a little bit. It's fine. No big deal. Um, I could put some color in that lens there on that Norton bomb site, but you know, there again, nobody's going to see it. So we'll see. So the underside here, this is the gear bay. And this is an example, uh, yeah. so here's the deal on this. This and these engine fronts and these nacelles, you know, the engine bays and the nacelles and these tires, wheels, I mean, um, the gear struts. I brush painted all of this stuff. And I'm not, you know, I'm not an artist. This isn't rocket science. Um, you know, it just it just cracks me up when you get these just guys that are just crazy adamant about, oh, you know, you can't brush because brushing just never looks good, and this and that and the other thing. And that's a bunch of horse puppy. Um, sure, it looks like crap if you either don't know what you're doing or you don't want to spend the time doing it right but uh, you just gotta learn to thin your paint and sure is there some strokes in here yeah but it's a wheel well it's gonna get weathered it's not a big deal you know but if you look at something like this i mean there's nothing wrong with that that looks great you know um and I know it's really bright. They're going to end up, when, by the time they get weathered and stuff, they're going to be toned way down. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do about this because obviously with raised tread detail, when I sand that seam out, 
Um, come on, come back, focus. When I sand that seam out, it's going to obliterate the tread detail on this thing. And, yeah, see that? So, and there's no way around that. And I, I'll probably, well, maybe I'll use the old uh, metal screen trick. If I do that, I'll show you what that is. Um, again, here's a gear strut. Um, you know, yeah, it's bright chrome. I'll, uh, tone it down except for the for the strut the compression strut itself and and um just so you know what i'm using this is i don't even know if you can get this anymore model master enamel chrome silver fs 17178 this is fantastic stuff it's on par with this you know molotov pen um I like my Molotov pen, but I only use it for for little stuff. Um, these are expensive, and, and they work great for detail stuff. Um, I haven't used it on a car yet. I, I, I imagine they're great for doing like window trim and stuff on cars, but you know, maybe we'll see one of these days. So anyway, back to what we're talking about. Um, so we talked about brush painting the the chrome silver and you know this stuff I think this is the same stuff Russ Goslin asked me this on my channel um, Russ Russ Goslin if you guys don't know is a really great armor modeler um, I had the pleasure of meeting him at the Colorado Nats a few years back nice guy check out his stuff um, and uh, I think his channel is just called Russell Goslin. Uh, I could look it up, but you know how to search, so go for it. So anyway, you know, I think this is the same exact thing that's in the square bottle that they've been selling since I was, um, well, for a long time, since, you know, at least the 70s. And, and, you know, I think it's one of those things where it's like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. The stuff is fantastic. If you haven't tried it, try it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still looking for an acrylic metallic. And I know a lot of you guys use them. But I haven't found anything, honestly, that really does it for me. Um, I like the Alclad stuff. Um... Tester's metalizer I used years ago. It was okay. Um, I've done foil. Um, foil is actually not as hard as you would think it is. And, and it looks good. It does. Um, <laughs> sorry about the background noise. My wife must be like going crazy on cleaning or something. Um... So yeah, you know, if if I've I'm trying to think, one of our club members did a Hobby Boss 101 kit and did, I think he used the AK stuff, um, and it looked pretty good. But you know, it, it it's not in my eyes. It doesn't have the gloss, the shininess that it that it should. It doesn't. It doesn't look like just like silver paint, but it it. What should I? What am I trying to say? It looks metallic, but it looks subdued, to me. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, these are the nacelles. This, in my opinion, is the worst part of this kit. As you can see, this panel and this panel are separate from the cowling itself, and when you put it all together and try and you know i concentrated on lining up the front here and trying to keep these level because it just it's just not just wasn't working very good um is this usable yeah 
um, I could fix it up and see and 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 it really wouldn't be that that hard. But there is a set of resin replacements with replacement engines available for like eight bucks from a guy on eBay, and he's got a couple other things I want to tr try. Excuse me, and um, so I'm thinking about getting those. And if I do that, that'll stall this build out big time. Um, but that's okay because I'll have to wait a week for him. But again, this is the uh, the uh, Model Master Chrome Silver, um, and the plan with the, these is. Um, well, let me tell you why there's so much Chrome Silver. So you know, no matter how much, how little bit of paint you put in your um, on your palette, by the time you thin it out, you always end up with more than you're going to need for what you're doing. <laughs> So, and I don't let, I don't, I'm not going to let it go to waste. So I just start grabbing things that, that might need a silver base and paint them. So that's, that's how I ended up with all this chrome silver all over the place. So anyway, the plan with these is, and this is pretty typical of the way I do engines. Um, the silver, I'll come in, I'll do the gray. Then I'll come in, I'll do black for the magnetos and stuff. And. And I'll, do, and I'll do the black on this plate back here. And uh, once that's all dried and whatnot, I'll flat coat it. And then I'll do a black or a dark gray wash on it to bring out the detail, the cylinder, the fins, and, and whatnot. Um, and that'll be it. You know, and then they'll get stuffed, they get stuffed back in here, and they're far enough back that you're not, you're not, you're not going to see those edges around there where the, the false wall is. I mean, you can if you're really looking, but for the most part, you don't see them. Um, you know, full engines are nice, but they're not necessary. And the props... Prop hubs, props. Um, I'm. Uh, I still got to clean up the edges on those and whatnot. So that's where we're at. Um, and so, like I said, now is is my big challenge is figuring out what to do with with all these windows in the fuselage, and whether I want to close the doors here um, you know leave these open leave these off or close them and and I'm not sure I haven't uh, I can do that later at the very least I'll use these for paint masks but uh, yeah this I haven't really tried these windows yet we'll see how well they fit Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I heard you. Breakfast is ready in case you guys didn't hear that. <laughs> so, um, so I guess that's my uh, my signal. So yeah, that's where we're at. I just kind of want to take some time and kind of walk through it. I need to walk through it from my own brain. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry. Um, wow, I'm just dropping stuff everywhere now. What was that and where did it go? Um, oh, there it is. Anyway, I guess that's it. Um, I'm going to go upstairs and have breakfast. You guys have a great day. Um, take care of the people you love. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.